all the insects slowly began to advance towards the Taeksu steel. Hong Yao started to observe them and she couldn't help but wonder if Jiang had released the Nine Miasma Wing. He had released all the insects to envelop the Taxu steel. It was so mysterious that even the invincible dreamer had used it for enlightenment. The insects who were very hungry, in a blink of an eye devoured the Taeksu steel, leaving no trace. Upon realizing this, Gu Kaishin was shocked. Jiang had absorbed the Taeksu steel by himself, something he could not understand. While Jiang was standing at the top of the Taeksu temple, Jiang Wushuang ascended several steps and began to stare at him silently. With a look full of hatred he accepted defeat this time, but swore to give his best when they competed in the ranking of prodigies of the Great Zia. Instead of continuing to ascend, Wushuang turned around and started to descend. Bai Feng and Tang Ying looked up and upon witnessing that even Jiang Wushuang had given up, he thought it was better to withdraw. According to her this was no longer worth it since climbing up here had almost cost them their lives and advancing further would harm their essence. Realizing that Jiang had reached the Taeksu Temple, Mu Hank Yu and Liu Sandao began to smile and could not help but feel happy. According to them the master was incredible, and fortunately they too had completed their mission. A ranking window of the system appeared in the sky. The first on the list was Jiang Chen with 1008 stages. The second was Jiang Wushuang with 623 stages. The third was Bai Feng with 609 stages. Fifth was Tang Ying with 600 stages. Sixth were Lei Zi and Liu Bijai with 304 stages. And the last were Liu Sando and Mu Hank Yu with 300 stages. Gu Kaishin who had his arms crossed began to smile since without Jiang Chen. The others would not have been able to get this far. Hong Yao started looking at Jiang with a tender look, for her he was incredible, and this new generation was much stronger than they were back then. Several minutes passed and Jiang stood still doing nothing, and upon realizing this, Hong Yao became somewhat confused and with a surprised look began to wonder why he continued standing there in a trance when everyone else had already come down. Jiang was in his subconscious, the Taeksu steel was teleported to the insect nest and little Nine hugged it, and her level rose from 22 to 25, obtaining several thousand devouring value. When she had said that she wanted to eat the steel, she meant to take it back to the insect nest. Now she was enjoying it and even had leveled up several times. While she was hugging the Taeksu steel like a baby, Jiang who was on the ground put his hands on his hips, started observing her and couldn't help but start smiling since the devouring values of the insects had also increased drastically. At this rate, they were going to be able to breed a third generation soon. He didn't know if the steel and nine miasma wings were connected in some way. The statistics window of the Taeksu steel appeared. It was originally an abyssal anchor stone. Located at the bottom of the abyss, it was a compact artifact and one of the fundamental essences of the abyss. The Taeksu steel came from the abyss and given that little Nine was the ruler of the abyss it was not surprising that she wanted the steel more than anyone. Jiang emerged from the insect nest and returned to reality, and at that moment, in the place where the Taeksu steel had been, poisonous mist began to appear. Upon noticing this, Jiang went on alert and became confused at the same time. While his body was surrounded by poisonous mist, he was transported to another place. He had been recognized as the master of the Taeksu realm, no matter where he found himself. With a single thought, he could teleport back to the Taeksu realm in any moment. No one except the master could open the doors of the Taeksu hall. Jiang was somewhat surprised and realized that the Taeksu steel was the key to the Taeksu realm. Only he could teleport here at any time and no one else could open it. He could use the Taeksu hall as his final trump card. He left the realm, jumped and decided that it was better to leave now. There were too many eyes watching right now. He wanted to avoid entering the hall for now to check it later. While he was in the air, Hong Yao and Gu Kaishin appeared and took him by both arms. He asked Jiang to come with him for a moment. They began to fly high and disappeared from sight. All the participants of the camp started to look at the sky and thought that the Celestial King of the Sword had captured Jiang. Thinking that it must be related to the Taeksu steel, some thought that this was happening to him for being too arrogant. Not far from the area there were snow-capped mountains. They went to another remote area. Gu Kaishin began to stare at him. One of the three invincible figures of Great Zia, the dreamer, only he could observe the Taeksu steel in search of enlightenment. He wanted to know how Jiang had used the nine miasma wings to absorb the Taeksu steel. With a serious look, Jiang stayed thinking in silence, and upon seeing that Gu Kaishin knew about the nine miasma wings, 
He thought that he had summoned him to this place to kill him. With a cheerful look, Gu Kaishin asked him if he really thought he would be able to turn the nine miasma wings into a poisonous mist and deceive everyone. Hong Yao, who was next to him, closed her eyes and started laughing since Jiang's expression was very cute. Jiang calmed down as judging by their appearance. They did not want to kill him. He decided it was better to tell the truth. With a serious look, he revealed that the nine miasma wings and the Teksu steel came from the abyss, sharing the same origin or rather that the Teksu steel originally belonged to the Nine Miasma Wings. Far from becoming alarmed, Gu Kaishin remained calm and told him that he should be aware of the Great Zia's stance on Calamity. Now he had two options. He could stay in the Yunmeng Swamp forever and live as an exile clinging to his life, or he could return with him and fight for his survival. Millions would want him dead, even those at the general or invincible level. Upon hearing this, Jiang couldn't help but panic. He swallowed hard and was astonished since it wasn't just his imagination before. The old master had come to the Yunmeng Swamp only to give him an exit. He didn't know why they hadn't met before. While he was lost in his thoughts, Hong Yao approached him. She started to point at him with her finger and with a serious look caught his attention, asking what he was thinking about and reminding him that the master had asked him a question. Upon hearing her voice, he came out of his trance. With a confident look, he decided to return. Although he carried a calamity with him, he had only killed bad people and did not believe he had done anything wrong. Since his conscience was clear, there was no reason to flee. Hong Yao began to look at him and she started to smile upon seeing his determination. Gu Kaishan, who had his arms crossed, began to laugh heartily. He expected nothing less from his disciple. Even though he did not want to admit it, even Jai Gang was not as good as him back then. Jiang was somewhat confused since he did not know what Uncle Jai Gang had to do with this. She closed her eyes, rested her fist on his shoulder, and asked him to remember that she was his older sister and Uncle Jai Gang was the second older brother. She explained that back then, Jai Gang had almost died at the hands of General Zio when he had assaulted the Zio family to steal Aunt Tang. The master had told him to hold his position, but he did not want to drag the master in and as a consequence, in the end, he was exiled to Chujong City. Jiang realized that Uncle Jai Gang also held a grudge against the Zio family. Gu Kaishin turned his back on them and mentioned that old grudges no longer mattered, whether they were invincible or generals. As long as Jiang's will was firm, they as master and disciple would face them together. When they returned to Jiangan, his sword would open a path for Jiang. These words were more than enough to make Jiang excited. While he had his arms crossed, Jiang knelt before him asking him to accept the reverence of his disciple. At the same time in the city, the sun rose and in a skyscraper, a meeting among generals took place. The supreme commander of the war zone of Jiangnan named Duan Xinghai intertwined his hands and with a calm look mentioned that since all twelve titled kings of Jiangnan had gathered except Gu Kaishan and Nian Hongya, he decided to get straight to the point. Everyone started to pay attention and he explained that based on their research, the poisonous mist of Jiang Chen was actually the Nine Miasma Wings. According to the Great Zia's Taboo Ordinance, anyone who awakened a type of calamity or controlled a taboo object must be killed mercilessly, asking for others' opinions on this. Mu Hankyu's grandfather, a red-haired man named Mu Hinian, raised his hand and with a smile said that although the Nine Miasma Wings had caused great catastrophe in past eras, it was almost impossible for it to grow to that scale in the present. He believed that as long as Jiang Chen was under proper supervision, it shouldn't be a big problem, and in the worst case they could simply take the nine miasma wings and destroy it, there was no need to kill Jiang. Tang Jing's father, a man named Tang Wang Chuan raised his hand and he agreed with his assessment since the Great Zia's taboo ordinance had been issued 500 years ago. Back then, Great Zia was incredibly weak but today, Great Zia was strong and they could negotiate taboo matters more flexibly. Two of the generals started to talk among themselves to see who had been connected with Jiang Chen from the beginning. They had heard that Mu Hinian's granddaughter had gotten quite close to Jiang in the prodigy camp. Jiang Chen belonged to Jai Gang, and Tang Wang Chuan's daughter, Tang Jin, was also getting involved with Jai Gang. Upon hearing this, Tang Wang Chuan became furious and at that moment, the door of the room shattered into pieces, creating a large curtain of smoke, leaving everyone in shock. The person who had destroyed the door was none other than old Zio Yuanchen from the Zio family, who wanted to kill Jiang at all costs. While his body was surrounded by a powerful energy, he began to point the sword at them and with a look full of hatred, he told them that anyone who dared to speak for Jiang Chen must first be prepared to taste his sword. Upon seeing General Zio, Duan panicked and apologized to Gu Kaishan if it weren't for General Zio intervening. Perhaps he could have helped negotiate this, but now he was alone. He hoped that he would not blindly protect Jiang and Sink as well. 
after a few hours, Duan, Jai Gang, and the others arrived at the area where the camp was going to land, and he explained that General Zio had deployed the Celestial Punishment Squadron. They were all hidden in the nearby mountains. According to Jai Gang, this was a grand scenario and he also realized that Jiang Chen and the others had to return soon. With an angry look, he grabbed the sword's hilt. If a fight broke out, he and Tang Jing were going to draw their swords. The old grudges and the new ones were going to be resolved together. He told Duan Feng that the night watch of Chu Zhong was now in his hands. Duan panicked and began shaking his hands. When he had intervened in the wedding, Duan had been with him, and now he was willing to cause trouble again. Yun Xiaoke who had her eyes closed, put a hand on her waist, and told them not to look at her asking if they needed a healer. Feng who was next to her, asked her to get lost since he enjoyed a good brawl and there was no way he would miss this. With a smile Tan Jing asked old Jai not to be so formal since they were family. She started to point at the sky and saw a bright light, wondering if that was not Jiang Chen and the others in the distance. Not far away on a mountain was old Zio's squadron, who located their target. He began to point towards the sky with his finger and gave the order to the Heavenly Punishment Squad to prepare, and also asked the Divine Crossbows to get ready to shoot. Upon hearing his order, the men took out their crossbows and began aiming at the sky. At the same time, the Tanjiao camp began to approach the area quickly. Hong Yao started to look down and upon seeing so many people she began to smile, since this situation was similar to when Jai Gang had gone to the wedding. This was perfect for her as last time she hadn't vented enough. Gu Kaishan remained calm and asked her what she was doing. With so many people watching, at least they should pretend that there was first courtesy, and then take action, otherwise, people would think that their whole family were brutes. Gu Kaishan's body began to emit an orange energy. Hong Yao noticed that his killing intent was even stronger, thinking that where there was a master there must be a disciple. Behind them was Jiang, she turned her head back and with a cheerful smile, asked what his opinion on this was, but he didn't even respond as he was once again lost in his thoughts. He was in the insect nest and around him were thousands of insects. A system window appeared informing that the reproduction of the nine miasma wings had finished. The mother insect was level 27 and she had an offspring of 5.11 million. Seeing that the reproduction of the third generation had been a success before the war, he felt happy. And although it wasn't enough to defeat the nation, it was more than enough. Hong Yao touched his shoulder and asked him not to be afraid since although he was not very strong, he had the master in her, making him come out of his trance. With a surprised look, he began to wonder what was happening. He started pointing at the mountain with his finger and explained that he was not afraid. He had just seen Uncle Jai Gang and the others on the mountain. First, he wanted to go see them and give them a gift. Gu Kaishan gave him permission since they were going to pass by there later anyway. Upon hearing this, he began to smile, and while his body was surrounded by poisonous mist, he jumped and started descending. Wushuang began to observe Zhang and with a surprised look asked that he not die since he had not yet played enough with him. Tang Ying realized that he had a calamity and it was no longer surprising to him that he had been able to kill Xiao Beihan in an instant. Bai Feng felt somewhat worried about him as she did not want the second person in all of the history of the Great Xia who had completed the Ladder of Emptiness to die. Zhang began to distance himself from them. Mu Hankyu started looking at him. Her master did not know if her grandfather was going to come help or not. Liuo Sandao who was next to her told her that worrying now was useless. This level of war was something they could not help with. Causing no problems was more than enough. Some time later, Zhang landed in the area where Jai Gang and the others were, and seeing that they had come, he couldn't help but feel happy. He approached Uncle Jai Gang, took out a green crystal from his inventory, extended his hand towards him and reminded him that at first he had said he was going to gift him a set of epic equipment, but he hadn't been able to obtain it but now believed that this was equivalent to it. Jai Gang extended his hand towards the crystal, began to observe it, and couldn't help but be shocked as it was an origin crystal. This was equivalent to having the key to enter the seventh realm. Jiang took out several more items, among them there was equipment and weapons, to Aunt Tang he gave a silk scarf, to Duong a bow, to Chu Buling a dagger, and to Han Ki platinum level equipment. At the same time old Zio and the Heavenly Punishment Squad arrived at a cliff, he was furious and his eyes were filled with rage. Upon seeing that Jiang Chen had descended, he ordered them to prepare. At that moment, Duan Feng appeared, and using his hand began to signal him to stop. He asked him to wait a moment since more than 100 days had passed since the Tanjiao camp had disappeared. It was being taken care of by Gu Kaishan so they could not be careless. The old Zio turned his head back, started to stare at him and began to think, then he started to look down, 
and with a serious look decided to kill Gu Kaishin along with Zhang if he did not know how to appreciate what he had. After several minutes, the camp arrived near the area. Duan Feng began to observe it, and asked Gu Kaishin to surrender and hand over Jiang Chen. He and Xiao Yuanchen were great fighters from Jiangnan. Once the battle began, the city was going to suffer great losses. According to him, it was better to sacrifice Jiang. Gu Kaishin, who was standing on top of the camp, refused to give up as in this life he had nothing to be ashamed of in Jiangnan nor in the Great Xia. He had brought back 150 heroes from the district and not only this, but he had also taken them on a visit to the Palace of Emptiness. The parents of the participants remembered that the Palace of Emptiness was a place of miracles, where many great ones sought power without success. They did not expect that the King of Celestial Sword would have a way to enter. Now their children were going to succeed. They could not just stand by doing nothing, and although they could not save Jiang Chen, they were not going to join the Zio family. Duan turned around, extended his hand to one side and with a smile explained that with these 150 heroes, the reputation of Jiangnan was going to rise like the tide. At that moment, the old Zio Yuanchen appeared and while his eyes were shining, he used his power, making two giant blocks of water appear. He was so powerful that the water from the rivers and the sea began to concentrate in the sky, creating a huge block of water. As his body was surrounded by water, he revealed that Jiang Chen could control a calamity, according to the law of Great Xia. He should be executed, and as for Gu Kaishin he was acting against the rules, protecting those who could control the forbidden. He had sealed off Changia's camp and all the examiners. According to him Gu Kaishin had put the camp in danger. Everyone started to look up and saw that the water was slowly approaching the camp. Zio Yuanchen could control the sea. Both he and Gu Kaishin were strong, so the others decided to be neutral and not join any side. With a calm look, Gu Kaishin asked Zhang to return and ordered Hong Yao to take care of the flight of the Tanjiao camp. Upon hearing this order, she began to use her powers and started controlling the camp. Zhang created a barrier around Jai Gang and the others so they would not intervene in the battle. He jumped up and using the poisonous mist began to fly. He apologized to them and also asked them to stay in the barrier watching without intervening. Upon seeing the barrier, Jai Gang was somewhat confused as he did not know when he had invoked the spell. He turned his head back and explained that he could not handle the spell, it would only dissipate once the battle ended. Gu Kaishin began to control his sword, making its blade emit a powerful golden energy. Old Yuanson started flying, extending his sword sideways, causing a large tornado made of water to appear behind him. He couldn't believe that Gu Kaishin really wanted to draw his sword against him. He leaned the sword on his shoulder. Yuanchen had a power superior to the 8th level and also possessed more than 10 forbidden water spells. And Gu Kaishin only knew how to use a sword, he did not know what he was afraid of. Both prepared to fight, but at that moment, someone invoked an ice barrier which appeared between the two, preventing them from starting to fight. The person who had created the barrier was General Duan. While he was controlling the barrier using his fingers, with a sincere look he asked both of them to calm down since if they were really going to fight. Not only would the camp suffer but even the Jiangnan base next door would also suffer the consequences. For everyone's sake, he asked them not to fight. At that moment, Sayo Beihan appeared and told them that for the good of the people it was better for him and Jiang Chen to have a duel to the death. Upon hearing his voice, Duan turned around and seeing that he had appeared, he couldn't help but be somewhat surprised. Now he had a new arm, using the sword, he began to fly. He started to observe his arm and couldn't help but start smiling. Jiang had cut off his arm that day and today he was determined to kill him with his own hands. Xiao Beihan began to advance towards them. Duan Feng extended his hand towards him asking him to stop. According to him, Xiao Beihan's idea was better since the grievances of the young should be resolved by the young and the old generation should not intervene. Jiang also started to fly. He began to stare at Xiao Beihan. He knew that he was not good enough to have a one versus one death match, so he asked what his conditions were. He started to smile and thought that he was a very smart boy. His two conditions were that he could not use Little Nine nor her poison. Xiao Yuanchen began to fly and could not help but laugh out loud, as it was no surprise that he was his grandson. They were doing this for the peace of Jiangnan and for the well-being of the people. Gu Kaishan unsheathed the sword and with an aggressive look, he began to point the blade at them and told them to stop saying nonsense. Just because they were on a high moral ground they could not do what they wanted. He prepared to fight and mocked Yuanchen saying that if he had guts then he should stop harassing the children and come fight him. But Jiang grabbed him and stopped him saying that they could not let others think that they were brutes. He started pointing at himself with his finger and with a confident look revealed that he did not need calamity to win, since he had another way of dealing with him. 
Upon hearing this, he was somewhat confused and asked what other way he had to deal with him. Jiang reminded him that he had said he would teach him a secret technique. Gu Kaishin was shocked to see that he wanted to learn the technique now. Hong Yao, who was flying, panicked and thought he was joking since she had taken more than 10 years to learn the secret technique and Jai Gang still had not been able to master the technique until now. Xiao Beihan started laughing and mocked Jiang asking if he wanted him to wait 10 years so that he could learn the technique. He began to smile and said it wasn't necessary. Just five minutes were more than enough. Gu Kaishin got angry and started shouting, explaining that the sword style was not something that could be learned so quickly. Xiao Beihan began to laugh even more, while on the other side, Yuanchen remained silent. Jiang took Gu Kaishin's sword, clenched his other fist, and with a confident smile asked him to teach him the technique. He started looking at the sword and fell silent. At that moment, the sword began to resonate and upon realizing this, he was shocked. He started to look at Jiang with a confused look and did not take long to realize that he had been the one who had caused the resonance of the heart of the sword in the space of the void. This is the end of the video, if you guys want to see the next part, then don't forget to subscribe and like the video.